One banana, two banana, three banana, four, five banana, six banana, seven banana, nine. Yeah, la 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 la. Are you ready, David? You gonna turn record on for me? Okay. Oh, you already pushed record. Why didn't you tell me? I was singing. Okay. Here's my show. And, and 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 he also created the slides that I have that are going to be in my um in my video today and he helped me put it together and he said this was his random act of kindness but I don't think it's a random act of kindness when your mama tells you you have to do it and that's what mama said that he had to help me because the more I do the better I want to be and this is a new year new Luca so I want things to be better and better and better and better but anyway thank you David because sometimes you're not a pain all right so I have something different today. I don't want to share with you books that you can read about a topic like I did one about underwear and about kindness. I decided today to show you three of my favorite, favorite authors. And, 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 and the author, author is someone who writes the book. And, and you know, some people write the book and some people make the pictures in the book and that person's called the illustrator. And the illustrator is the one who does the pictures, and the author, author is the one who does the writing. But sometimes the same person does both. Like, like Dr. Seuss, he wrote and he drew. And, and, and Ezra Jack Keats, he wrote his books and he drew his own pictures. And, and I think that's really cool because then it's a whole, whole piece of art created with the words and the pictures together. I mean, there's nothing wrong with having somebody else do your illustration because sometimes you can have great friends that help you out. But that, that to me is one of my favorite things to do because then you really get, get a good feeling about those books. So I got three I want to share with you today. They're both authors slash illustrators. Todd Parr, Molly Idol, and Peter Reynolds. Okay, so I'm going to start with Todd Parr. All right, so David's supposed to put a slide in right now of what Todd Parr looks like. This is him. Okay, so he writes these books. I know you've probably seen them, and they're very, very colorful. Todd Parr writes these books, and, and he, um, everything has big black outlines. This one's called It's Okay to Make Mistakes. It's one of my favorite books, and my grandma Vava reads it to me a lot. You know, she's the one that gave me the underwear book that I showed you a long time ago um, that wasn't a library book, but this is a library book. So I want to tell you about um, um, Todd Parr. He's written more than 40, written and illustrated more than 40 books. Um, he has a podcast. I don't know what that is, but David says you can listen to it. So maybe if you have an older brother or sister, they can help you find the podcast of some of your authors that you like. Okay. And um, he loves pit bulls. He has a family of pit bulls that live with him. Um, and some people think they're dangerous dogs, but that's not what here we're here to talk about. But he loves pit bulls, and, and his pit bulls look really nice, and they don't look scary at all. So, um, 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 he draws his, his books on the computer. He uses um, um, some different computer apps or programs to make the pictures and fill in the colors and stuff. And I think they're really cool. Um, Let's see, what else do I know about him? Uh, oh, oh, he has a website. It's toddparr.com. And you can go there and read all kinds of things about him because that's where I learned all about him. And um, let's see, what else? Mm, oh, over 15 different languages his, his, his books have been published in. So they take his book and they make it in French. They make it in Vietnamese. Vietnamese, yeah. And um, Korean and, and, and maybe German or something so that people who don't read English and, and don't speak like we do 
that can, can read his books too. Isn't that great? Because his books are all about being kind and being proud to be yourself and, 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 and not being afraid of being different and different kinds of families and different ways that, that families care for each other and what makes up a family. Um, his books are very brave and, it, and, and, and they're good for children to read, but they're good for adults to read too. So I'm going to show you some of his books. Oh, I forgot to tell you, I forgot to tell you that he, um, he, he designed clothing for children first and they had these same illustrations on them. Then he decided to turn them into a book. Isn't that cool? So there, back in the 90s, you could get, um, a t-shirt with a Todd Parr picture on it. But even before Todd Parr started writing these books and, um, he, um, he has a um, TV show too, um, I think. Yeah, it's called Todd, oh, I wrote it down here, wait a minute. Todd World. So at any rate, let me show you some of the books he's done. Like this one is The Mistakes. It, every, he says you learn by making mistakes, like spilling the milk, that's an accident, and you learn what not to do, and um, maybe you answered a math problem wrong, uh, maybe you don't know the answers. That's the kind of thing he wants you to know about. Okay, this one's really cool. My teacher read us this on the first day of school this year. It's called The School Book. You can see he sort of has a, a way of naming his books. Ah, oh, this one is nice. This is the Feel Good Book. And the Feel Good Book is, um, is about things that make us smile every day. What do you like that, that, that makes you smile? I, I, I'll go back to that one in a minute. You think about it, okay? So, oh, this one's my favorite. Reading makes you feel good. Yeah, so so in your feel-good book, you could write about reading because it makes you feel good. And, and oh, I love this one. I gave it to my teacher for, for, for the holidays. It's called Teacher's Rock. My mom and I helped um uh, get one. And, oh, this is a book that is sad because it's about having to say goodbye. Um, if something, um, if someone you love, you know, so like has to move or 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 um dies or something like that i mean this book i'll tell you how to say goodbye to that person and um love the world we belong together these are all by todd parr and i don't even have to tell you what they're about because the title tells you what you're about at what they're about and look at this one it's called the brother book and 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 it talks about all the things that brothers do that are nice and, and nasty, like some brothers study bug, bugs and some brothers eat bugs. Yuck. Paul eats bugs. Greg eats bugs. And, and, and David, he used to eat bugs, but now he likes to study them with, the, with the, um, the thing that you put up at your eye. I don't remember what that thing's called. Um, um, uh, I don't know. The lens thingy. I don't know what it's called. Anyway, um, some brothers yell when they're upset. Even if they're upset with you. And some brothers cry like a baby. I got a new baby brother and he cries a lot. Especially when he's hungry or he has a poopy diaper. Okay, so it's okay to be different. It's okay to have big ears. It's okay to be adopted. It's okay to have wheels. It's okay to be different. What's different about you? What's different about me is that I have so many brothers and sisters. And I, and, 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 um, um, I like to talk about them a lot. And what else is different about me is that, um, um, oh, because I have such a pretty bow in my hair, not everybody at school got pretty bows like me. Oh, and then Mary, my sister, and I got a couple other sisters that, this is the sister book. And this one's real important to me because I'm going to, to make my own book just like this for my mommy for Mother's Day in a couple of months. Um, and it's called the mommy book. He's done so many more, a whole lot more. And, and right here, David's going to show you some more in a slide. So, um, he says, this is what Todd Parr says, and I have to read it to you because it's, it's just, it's what they call a quote. He said, he says, I like the fog. I like the sea lions and the dolphins. I like to paint. My favorite color is blue. My favorite food is mac and cheese. And, and, and so you could write that book. You could, you could write Todd Parr a letter and say, I like the fog. Well, if you don't like the fog, you don't have to say that. But like, you could say, I like Miss Jillian. I like the library. Um, I like my new baby brother, Peter. And um, um, 
You could tell him everything that you like and what your favorite food is. That, that would be a good thing to do. And then he says that his books say you are okay and you need to feel good about yourself and your family. And so that's Todd Parr. And I really like him. Part two is about Molly Idol. That's my theme song. And, and do you like black blueberry pie? Um, uh, I do, and um, Molly Idol does too, and she's my next author illustrator. And um, she's also just an illustrator. She draws pictures for other people's books too. And, um, but she has done some on her own, some of her own writing. And, um, and um, she used, all of her work is done with colored pencils. And um, what else do I know about her? She's from Arizona, and she lives there. And she, she, I think she went to the University of Arizona for the college. But let me show you some of her books. This is a book called Coral. And it looks like it's, it's very, very sweet and soft. And, oh, I like the fact that it looks like it's got ocean water in it and stuff. It's really cool. It's called Coral. And, and um, um, she, she says that ideas pop in her head like light bulbs. And it's usually, if she sat down and tried to come up with ideas, she can't. She has to be doing something else. And that's true about me, too. And so if she's driving a car or washing the dishes or um, cooking or something or, or um, um, maybe walking the dog, suddenly, boom, an idea comes in her head. And she goes and she gets her book out. She has all kinds of notebooks and she sketches and she writes. And, and sometimes ideas stay in those notebooks for a couple of years. But sometimes it's like she has to immediately start writing about it. But I think that's really cool about Molly Idol. And um, so she encourages children like you and me to, to, to have a sketch notebook so that you can write things down that give you your ideas. And, and um, here's another book by her. This one also looks like the ocean. It's called Pearl. Pearl. And, and, and um, it says, sometimes the tiniest light can shine the brightest. And look, it's got an octopus in it. They're so pretty. I don't care what the words say sometimes. I just like to look at the pictures because they make me feel so soft. And, oh, I mean, they just, I don't know, they make my heart say, oh, I love the world. And, um, oh, my goodness. Oh, sorry, Belle. Look, there's a sad page in it. So, I mean, there's something that happens to this, to this um, um, mermaid called Pearl. And you'll see what happens if you read this book and get it, get it at your library. And then she wrote um, Flora and the Flamingo. And, and she actually got an award called a, called, called the Cop Honor. She didn't win the big awards. It was sort of like runner up, but she got a called the Cop Honor for this book. And it's really cool looking too. Look, and, and it's got fold out flaps. It's got flamingos in it. And she's dancing with the flamingos. And, 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 and I'm learning how to do different kinds of dances. And that's why I like this book when I found it. Because they're doing different kinds of dances. So you might want to read this one. And, and she has a whole series of books about birds. That's why she has Flora and the Ostrich. And it's a flip, flip, flat book too. And they don't have a lot of words in it. But this one teaches you about things like over, under, black, white, uh, opposites. Op opposites. Op yeah, yeah, that's the word, opposites. And this one's called Flora and the Chickens, and it helps you learn how to count. And um, so uh, that one, that one, I think my, my brother David is going to um, help me. Oh, oh, David, can you show the picture of Molly Idol? Okay, thank you, David. There she is right there. And, and, and um, she, she um, has done some other books too, like, like, this one's called Flora and the Penguin. And it's about the same little girl. And again, it's, it's mostly pictures, not words. And I think it's really cool because look at all the different flaps that you can turn. And you have to be very, very careful with this kind of book if you get them from the library. Well, you have to be careful with all the books, but especially the flap ones. Um, this one is my favorite. 
And I'm not going to share the inside of it with you yet because because I'm going to show you at the end, okay? So we're going to look at it together at the end. All right, so I'm going to put it over here. Now, she does some funny stuff, too. She does a book called T-Rex, but I couldn't check it out from the library this time because it was all checked out. But I did get Camp Rex, and it's about a, 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 um, a girl that goes camping with a T-Rex. And, and um, it talks about how to camp. That's what it's telling you how to do. It's a how-to book by Molly Idol. Do you know what she does? She like, okay, let me show you. I have to use the book to show it to you. But she will draw this person. And then she will draw this person. And then she will draw this person. And she cuts them out. And she puts them on top of each other. She does the background. So she doesn't dress all the pictures at once. She layers all the different things in the picture. So if you were going to draw a picture of um, a snow scene, you could draw a house and cut it out. And then draw um, snowflakes and cut them out. And put them on the, the, the page on top of each other. That's what makes it look um, different than just drawing a flat picture. She, that's what I read. That's, and my art teacher likes Molly Idol too at school. So look at that. Look, look, look. The Triceratops is eating with them at the campground. They're eating s'mores. Oh, there's there's a Stegosaurus. That's pretty cool. In the backyard. You can camp in your backyard. But she teaches you how to camp with this book. I think you would like it. Um, she She's really, really cool. And so I want you to check out more about her by going to your library. And, and think about her every time you eat blueberry pie. Okay, sorry, I didn't I didn't know we were back from the break. Okay, so um show the picture of Peter Reynolds, because he's our next person, David. Show the picture of Peter Reynolds. And now show the picture of his brother. They're twins. They look a lot alike. And, and and they both are authors and illustrators. Um but 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 Peter Reynolds does more than Paul. Paul is his brother. So but we're gonna talk about Peter Reynolds today. And he wrote this book called B U. Not P U. B U and um the pictures are so pretty. If you look on the inside, you can see that it tells you to do, be different. This is sort of like what Todd Parr says, but this is a whole different, whole different author. And um, um be understanding. It's all these things that it wants you to be. I really like that book by him. But let me tell you what I know about Peter Reynolds. He was born in a country called Canada. Um, his brother Paul works with him sometimes. Sometimes they write together. Sometimes they don't. A lot of times they don't. Um, he and his brother own a bookstore in, in Mass Massachusetts. M Massachusetts is a state and they have a bookstore. It's called the Blue Bunny. And you can buy his books there and other books too. And um, he writes books about being creative and being yourself, being all you could be, and reaching for the stars. And um, um, he himself likes to do random acts of kindness because he, he volunteers a lot for organizations and, and, and things like that. And um, he has, has a, he and his brother have this thing placed or thing that they may call, I gotta read it. I know David, just a minute. Rental, Reynolds Center for Teaching, Learning, and Creativity. And it helps support teachers being creative and children being creative and, and creative lesson plans and stuff like that. Okay, so you might know him from illustrating the Judy Moody books. He's like Molly Idol. He, he illustrates all kinds of things and then he started writing his own books. So he does a little bit of both, but he's an author illustrator too. So let me show you another book. And he's done, I love this one because Collecting words is one of my favorite things. This is called the word collector. And um, look, the little boy in it, he, um, look at he did with some of his words. He took a, a clothesline and some clothespins and he started making sentences with the words he collected. Isn't that pretty cool? Yeah, really close, you can see it. I like this book. He collected words he read. He cut them out of magazines. Uh, this is like a fun activity to do. You'll like that one. He wrote and illustrated um, with his brother this book. 
See, there's Paul's name right there. Can you see it? And there's Peter's name, Peter and Paul Reynolds. Yeah. And um, um, they wrote this book. It's called Going Places. And, and it's about, um, well, it's not about going places as much as it is um, making decisions uh, about your life and, and how you're going to um, um, be different from everybody else. And it has a race in it. A race in it and and um, this girl has to make a car for the race and what does she want her car to be able to do when of course but you'll have to read it see and happy dreamer is a good book happy dreamer um says dream big um and you can see a lot of his books are the same shape and about the same size like that I really like I like to read happy dreamer a lot because it's got musical notes in it and it says I'll read this part to you my dreams have a mind of their own. Sometimes my mind just takes flight. I hear a beat and I gotta move. And then I hear another and another. Sometimes I'm a quiet dreamer. When I make time to stay still and hear myself think. To let go and see what takes shape. Do you see that? Look, he's looking at the clouds. My grandma Vava says... Lay down, let's look at the clouds, and we do it a lot. I like to do it when I'm in the car, but when Grandma Baba is driving, she can't do it because then she has to have her eyes on the road. But you could do that laying down or do it. Look for pictures in the clouds, okay? So he wrote a book called The Dot, and and and, and my art teacher likes to use that book because it talks about, um, it was checked out from the library, but I, 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 David, I got a picture of it. David did for me. Yeah, that's it. It's called The Dot. Leave it up there for a little while, David. Okay. And, um, and, and the dot is, is an important book because it talks about how you don't have to draw like everybody else. And art teachers all over the world use that book to teach about being an individual in your art. Okay, David, you can come back to me. And it's popular that um, it, it, it's now a national day. It's called National Dot Day. And all over the world, kids are... are are encouraged on that day to draw your own pictures and even though your dot is part of your pictures so it's like if one kid draws a tree and the other girl says I drew a dot and they're like that a dot's not a picture and anyway it's a really good story about being yourself okay and then he also wrote ish and because uh, there's big brothers in there that are uh, that are not very nice to the younger one because the young one says um this is the pencil I drew it and they say I don't look like a pencil and he says, well, it's pencil-ish. And, and they say, well, it doesn't look like a cat. He says, it's cat-ish. Because when you draw, it doesn't have to look exactly like, uh, like what it is. But anyway, his books are done in watercolor, like watercolor paints and ink. He makes some movies, too. But this book here is called Rose's Garden. And look how pretty it is. Yeah, and, and, and it makes me think of, my teachers always tell me to make connections. And it made me think about a book called um, Something Beautiful, where the street is, is nasty looking. And then they paint the sidewalks and paint the walls. And it looks pretty. I think that's what it's called. And then, and then there's a book that I like called um, um, The Curious Garden. And, and in The Curious Garden, the boy walks around and it's all gray bricks. And he finds one little flower. One itty, bitty, 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 bitty flower that's growing up. And so he starts to water it, and the flowers start to grow, and it changes the whole look of the city. And that's what this book makes me think about. Because, see, it starts off with, with colors that are boring. And then at the end of the book, well, I can't show you the very end, because then that would be giving away the secrets. But it gets more and more and more. I can't show you anymore. That's it. I don't want you to give away the secret. But it's, it's by Peter Reynolds, and he illustrated it. And, and um, it's, it's a really good book, too. So he, he's an offer illustrator as well. And um, I want to celebrate him by just playing a different song. That's my celebration of Peter Reynolds song. And, and that's the author's picks I have now. Now I want to show you, I'm going to read, um, um, my, my brother David is going to help me read this book to you. So, um, we're going to read it together in just a minute. And, um, and then, um, I, I, okay, I'll show you just a little bit of it. But, oh, I can't show you. That's the most important part. I can't show you that. 
Okay, look at this. Look, oh, it's about peacocks. Look at this. Where did that other page go that looks... Oh, see? He, there's two peacocks and she's dancing with them. And look what happens when you flip the flaps. Flip, flip the flaps up. But I'm going to read this book to you. So, you can't... I can't show you anymore. Because I'm going to read that one. But David's going to help me. Okay. And, and, and then I wanted to read something out of this one. It says... Crying when you feel sad makes you feel good. This is the Todd Parr book. And laughing out loud feels good. Those are my two favorite things. Because sometimes people say, don't cry. And, and, and then my brothers will call me a baby. And I'm, I'm not being a baby if I cry. It just makes me feel good because then the sadness goes away. And laughing out loud makes me feel good too. You get a big belly laugh. And so, let's see. I'm going to share a part of this book with you really quick. Um, no, no. Okay, David, I, if we don't have time, we don't have time. Will you read this for me later? Okay, so he's going to read it to me later, and I'll show it to you at the same time, okay? All right. Thank you very much. So that's all for Lucas Picks this time, and um, um, I've got to, to play my song. So you ready? Oh, I started wrong with it. Okay, here we go. And I told you that I was going to share this special Molly Idol book with you called Flora and the Peacocks. And it has a lot of secrets. So even though I'm going to share the secrets with you, you can go to the library and get the book or get it, borrow it from a friend if that friend has it. And then you can see the secrets again because they're still wonderful no matter what happens. So, um, oops, wait a minute. I turned too far. Here we go. Flora and the Peacocks by Molly Idol is a chronicle book. Looky there. That's really cool. So here we go. So here's Molly as she's behind a fan. Look. Peacocks. Okay, turn a page. Ooh, pretty. Okay, turn a page. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I wonder what they're gonna do. <gasps> they're gonna be friends. Oh. <gasps> How beautiful. Okay. okay, so. Oh, that's really cool. They look like they're getting ready to dance. Oh, some more flaps. Okay, you ready? Let's try to do both these at the same time. I'm so glad that I got to read this book, with, share this book with you. There's the Molly and the Peacocks. Okay, turn the page. Oh my goodness, what's happening here? <gasps> I think he's saying, you will be my friend. And then this one said, no, you will be my friend. Molly doesn't know what to do. Oh my goodness. <gasps> it's an argument. She doesn't know what to do and her fan is torn. Oh, Molly. I could teach her some breathing exercise so she doesn't feel so bad about that. Come on, Molly, breathe. <sighs> Growl like a bear. <sighs> That's what Miss Christine taught me. Oh, goodness. They better apologize. Oh. Oh, look what they did. They put it. Oh. Oh. Oh, look at the secrets. They put it back together for her. Look how pretty. It's huge. It's huge. Oh, I got to look at that some more. All oh, the pretty colors. I see 
Uh, blue and green. What colors do you see? Is Molly happy or is Molly sad? She could still be mad at her friends, but I think they did something nice. Okay, you have to be real careful when you close the pages back up. All right. Oh, and they're their friends again. Oh, thank you so much. This is a really cool book. And don't forget, it's one of Molly Idol's books. Flora and the Peacock's Molly Idol. Thank you, David, for holding the camera. David, come on. You got to read this for my video. Read this book. This great book by Peter Reynolds. Okay. Well, all right. Now, listen. I'm going to count from three to one, and you read. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay. Three, two, one. <clears throat> Going Places. Written by Peter H. Reynolds and Paul A. Reynolds. Illustrated by Peter H. Reynolds. Raphael had been waiting all year long for the Going Places contest. A chance to build a go-kart, race it, and win. When their teacher announced... Who would like the first kit? Raphael's hand shot up. The rest of the class watched enviously as Raphael walked back to his seat with a kit. Miss Shinada assured them, don't worry, you'll all be getting one. And that's and they're all exactly alike. The kid came with a set of precise instructions that made Raphael happy. He was very good at following directions. Raphael hammered, glued, nailed, and assembled his kit. His go-kart looked just like the one in the directions, and he was feeling quite proud. Raphael wondered how his classmate Maya was doing. She lived right next door. He peered over the fence. Hey, Maya, you haven't started? Maya didn't respond. She was so intent on watching the bird in front of her and quickly sketching it that she didn't even notice Raphael. Then she just put down her pencil and stared at the bird dreamily. Raphael shrugged and let her be. The next morning, Raphael checked back in to see how Maya was doing. Wow, what is that, he asked. Maya grinned. You like it? Raphael responded slowly. Yeah, extremely cool, but Maya, there's just one little problem. That's not a go-kart. Maya smiled. Who said it had to be a go-kart? Raphael was confused. The set of instructions inside the box were for a go-kart. But then again, they didn't say it had to be a go-kart. He looked again at Maya's contraption. After a moment, he grinned. I get it. Hey, Maya, I really want to win this race. The instructions never said we couldn't team up either. And so they did working late into the evening. The next day, everyone gathered for the big race. Each go-kart was a perfect replica of the other. Except one. One of the kids laughed. Looks like you had trouble with the going places instructions. You're gonna go places, all right. You're going to lose. Maya and Raphael didn't even have time to respond because the announcer's big, boomy voice called out, Attention racers, start your engines. Four, three, two, one. A buzzer sounded, and they're off. While all the other go-karts disappeared in a cloud of dust, Maya just sat there in the motionless vehicle. Raphael shouted over the roar of engines and cheering crowds, 
Maya, what are we waiting for? No worries, Raphael, answered Maya. Flaps down, throttle up. And now they took off, off into the air. The other contestants looked up in amazement. Maya and Raphael hovered and then sped past them all. Before long, Maya and Raphael coasted across the finish line to the cheers of the waiting crowd. They kept rolling clear across the race grounds. Maya slammed the brakes, stopping just short of the lake at the edge of the school field. Raphael noticed a startled frog leapt from a lily pad and dive into the water. He raised his eyebrow and looked at Maya. She smiled. Raphael, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Raphael just nodded. And then they made a frog. Thank you, David. That's so nice of you. What a sweet story. You're welcome. Thank you.